Good morning, folks. We've got weather, the ground, exoplanets, and the cosmos on deck today as we begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were exceptionally calm. FYI, we're about to begin SDO eclipse season, so don't get scared in the coming week or so when the blackouts begin as they do twice a year. For now, we're eyeing the coronal holes. Bright regions lack sunspots, and we're not only watching for solar wind, but magnetic connection through the interplanetary magnetic fields. End of the frame here, you can see the eclipse season appearing to begin already. Another look here. Coming to the solar wind next, we indeed bottomed out between faster streams. Low solar wind means geomagnetism is quiet, so let's go up to the phi angle. Nope. Still another day without sustained magnetic connection to those new coronal holes. When we see the line trying to ride that pink area, that's when the magnetosphere and global electric circuit will begin taking quake-making surges. Eyes open for it. Meanwhile, we'll go to the weather where opposite sides of the scale are now visiting the same continent, basically searing in the southeast for February with late spring weather, while the west coast, especially to the north in Canada, is breaking their cold records. And when places like Canada or the upper Midwest start breaking cold records, just go get the firewood. Another Arctic blast is coming. Let's go out to what appears to be a planet covered in buffalo cheese dip. Maybe that's lava. I don't know. They call it 55 Cancer E, and they say the exoplanet is somewhat warm. It's the newest addition to their Exoplanet Explorer site, which is linked below. Sparkling silicate clouds putting on a show for the zero life forms living there. We also have the Galactic Viewer, which is part of the program. It's really interesting when you get out to the stellar and galactic scale. Amazing to see how little we know, the asterisks, compared to what else is out there. An awesome note is that the polar orbital Milky Way satellite dwarfs and clusters is visible too. It's one of the ways you know us, Andromeda and Centaurus A, debunk cosmological dark matter control of galactic rotation. And that brings us to this. Why share yet another of the billion theories of what dark matter is when it's an exotic particle take on things in a probably plasma universe? Because their version of the axion is different. It's highly interactive with photons, like normal matter, has strong electrodynamic properties like normal matter, not the least of which would be the parallel radially oriented electric and magnetic fields. Does this sound like the dark matter they can't find, or does that sound like plasma? Last but not least, folks, there is an arc storm scale now just like for tornadoes and hurricanes. The arc storm, or atmospheric river storm, is a pressure-driven setup where tropical heat and water vapor is constantly funneled into one area over and over during a weak upper jet blocking and confinement scenario. These are one of the weather features expected to greatly worsen, regardless of whether you like global warming, grand solar minimum, or the pole shift. No good news for any of them. We greatly appreciate your support. We are cranking away on episode 16 of Earth Catastrophe Cycle, but are probably still two days away. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 425 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.